In this video, we're going to focus on how to draw text within a rectangle. And this is a very important exercise because with this, we're going to learn how to position the text precisely in the center of that shape. So let's scroll down here and start working on it. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is to draw a rectangle here. So what I'm going to say here is uh, CTX. And then we're going to say here, for example, uh, fill rec. So we're going to fill up the rectangle, or sorry, not even yet. We're going to say fill style, give it a color for us. And in this case, I'll just give it a color red, or at least this is my variable that I already have. And then next I want to say ctx.fillRec, and then we're going to draw a rectangle here. So I'm going to say this will be 50 pixels by comma, 50 pixels, so let's see x and y coordinates. And then let's say you 100 by 100. Save this and refresh, and now we have a nice rectangle here, or more specifically, a square. What I want to do eventually is I want to grab a text. I want to put in the text here. I want to put it in the center. But what I want to make sure is that this text here around will cover it nicely. So that will mean that the height and the width of the shape must be equal or matching with the text. So now we have this square. Let's draw the text first. So I'm going to say here the text. And we can say here ctx.font equals, and then let's give this a specific uh, text. You could say italic, and then bolder, and then let's say 50 pixels, font family area. And then what I want to do here is I'm going to say a constant text, and this constant text will be the text we're going to use. I'm going to use here box uh, green text. All right, so I'm going to use different characters here, specifically the G here, because the values with everything with here, this below here, will be very important later on. I'm going to show you exactly why these kind char these type of characters will be important for us. So once we have this, what I want to do here now is to start grab that text and measure that text to get the specific width. So for that, luckily we already know how to do it. We're going to say here. Uh, ctx dot measure text and then this here will be the text itself and it will say dot width and then what I want to do here is of course to give it a constant and just say this will be text width equals that so now if I want to do this I need to move this of course down because you can see here the variable is being assigned here so and then we have to put it in, in there and if I save this now refresh you can see here this text works although i wonder what is the font color of our text or at least we didn't assign yet the text so let's draw the text as well so i'm going to say here or more specifically not even here and the reason why i don't want to do it here is because if i go to draw this first and then afterwards i will draw this it will overlap and more specifically the red one will be on top and cover the text which is below the square so I don't want that. I want to make sure the text here will be drawn on top of the rectangle. So it's within that rectangle. So what I'm going to say here is the following. I'm going to say ctx that fill style. I'm going to say equal here. And let's make this another color. Let's say color blue. All right. And then what I want to do here is I want to say ctx dot fill text. And once I did that. I'm going to say here what will be the text well specifically this text and then what will be our height and width well in this case we know our width or a width will be or sorry no our x and y coordinates or not the width we know our x and y let's say 50 by 50 for now and then after we can see how this will start to look so i come here save that and then refresh and there we are so you can see here now the width of the text is exactly matching the rectangle. So if I would do here another one, two, three, four, five, say refresh, you can see and this starts to match. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to start to put it in the in position here, but I also want to have the height here matching with this. So how do I do that? Well, what we're going to do here now is basically modify this one. We already know it's 50 pixels. However, remember we need to now get the official height width. So I'm going to say here text height and the text height will be based on 
two specific values. Let's remove them and let me show you here. If I do a console log on the text height, we just covered in a previous video, but I just want to show you again just in case. Say refresh. All right. We get here the text matrix, and we're going to grab here the specifically, which is the font bounding box accent, ascent, plus the font bounding box descent. So if you want to understand why, please watch my previous video. So I'm going to say text height plus text height. Oh, well, I guess we don't have to do it like that. We're going to do it here. Dot that. And then here plus the descent. We say plus descent, but of course, I'm going to copy this, put it in there. So we copy those two together, and then we get the official height. And this height will be important for us. I'm going to put it in here, save that, refresh. All right, so now if I refresh again, so now it works fine because uh, based on the calculation of our structure here, that's why there was some white space. However, we have this here now, and what I want to do, I want to push this down, down in the center here. So how do we do this? Well, we have here now, of course, once we have this here, we can start to align the text. And what I want to do here is two things. Because we have here now the perfect width, we can push this down. And what you can say your CTX, and this will be important, we're going to say your CTX dot text align equal center. By doing this, I'm going to change the structure of it, and you can see what's happening. It will center here exactly, and the reason why is because of our item here. As you can see here, we have these coordinates and it was centered there. So that is we're going to the uh, horizontal alignment of our text. So what we need to do now is we need to add up here, basically how much is the text. And what I want to do is I want to grab here the text width. We copy this text width, we're going to plus this here. If I save that, refresh, you can see now it moves here. So what we really want to do is we want to have the 50 pixels, and then we want here this width, but we need to divide this by two to be in the center here, because right now it considers this as the center. So what we're going to do here is divide this by two, and I'll just give this parentheses, although it's not really necessary because it's, this will get the priority, but just for, to be sure. Now we are nicely in the center. So next what I want to do is I want to go down here. To go down here, what I need to do is basically work with the text height and we need to divide that again by two so we have here the text height what i'm going to do here is the text height plus oh sorry 50 because of the 50 pixels of our position here plus text height divided by two if i save that refresh all right so now it looks like we have a problem here but this is not the case what we need to do now is we need to align the text here or basically what we need to do not even align the text center but this one will be in the middle of the baseline so we're going to say ctx dot text baseline equal in the middle. And once I did this, save that, refresh, we can see here nicely we are now in the center. And the reason, this is the reason why, and maybe you say, well, what about this here? All right, so let me show. I'm going to remove that italic, put it back to default, like that. So that works fine. And then you might say, well, hold on. If I remove the G and the J, the green for the letter green, let's remove that. And J as well, save. You might say, well, hold on. I see here the text is more in the center compared to here. Because look, there's a lot of space here. That's correct. The reason why this is, this is because of what we call here the baseline. And we have to consider the descending part. Here is the font bounding box descent. The, the characters of the letter J, Y, G, uh, Q, anything, or P, anything where there's a item that goes below the baseline, that is being calculated as a part of it to make it really in the center. So that's why we have J, Q, P, Y. If I save this, refresh, you can see these are here being considered. That's why it happens. And the J shows you very nicely the space here between. So if you see this, and maybe say, well, is this really correct? Well, let me show you exactly the same. We're going to do the same here. We're going to duplicate this, except now we do one different adjustment. For the baseline, I'm going to put this back to alphabetic. That's the default alphabetic. So we're going to put it at default. And then what I want to do is, because if not, they will be on top of each other, 
I'm going to decline the height by or push it a bit more down with let's say we put it here 250 and then we're going to say here as well 250 and if I save this refresh you can see here now what is really happening we're pushing that and this here now is starting to change because it's, it's the alphabetic if we do back to middle you can see now it will be nicely positioned correctly in the center so this is why we need to do this and this is why there is this so this tiny difference here that visually might not look in the center although it's just a tiny few pixels but it is in the center and this is very important all right but we're not done yet because you can see here what about left and right let's say you want to put a padding around it because this is how we're going to do really additional well actually it's quite simple we have here our font width what we could do here is just say plus 20 pixels because we divide it by two and we have the text aligned in the center you will see that this will work nicely and if you would like to do it here as well we can do plus maybe 10 pixels for that save that refresh and you can see now this will nicely align in the center while the other one as you can see here is starting to struggle with that and will jump more higher in it and will not look exactly according so this is basically the way to start working and this is very very important if you're going to work with chart js and you're going to start to do chart drawing or drawing something specifically in the bars